everyone and welcome to this live virtual open event here at the Northern School of Art. My name is Liam Bradley and I'm the recruitment manager here. We're really looking forward to sharing with you all of the great things what make us a really truly um, unique institution. You will hear from all of our programs, key support staff, um, our student union reps and we'll also be sharing their experiences too. Also on hand are our student recruitment team so make use of the question tool on your screen and they'll be answering questions as we go through. The last part of the event will focus on your questions and we have some academic colleagues that have come in today to answer these for you. We really hope you enjoy the next 90 minutes or so and I'm going to hand you over to our Vice Principal, Pat Chapman. Hi everyone, uh, as Liam said, I'm Pat Chapman and I'm Vice Principal here at the Northern School of Art. Um, I want to thank you for joining us today. It's a shame we can't meet in person because uh, for me that's one of the great joys of this job actually meeting you face to face, learning about you, learning about what you're interested in. But we can't do it in these strange times, but I really hope that we can meet in person very soon. First thing I want to say is that some of you might be thinking about joining us in September. We're starting higher education in September and I imagine that you're nervous you're anxious, even scared, and I can completely relate to that. These are strange times. But I want to reassure you that here at the Northern, we are going to be open for teaching in person, in our studios and our workshops. And yes, we will be using live online lectures as well, supplement that. We'll also make sure that everything we do is safe for you, which is what we've done in consultation with our unions and following all of the government's other. The other thing to say is though, once we can go back to something like normal, we will go back to normal. So we're not anticipating a whole year of digital lecture. So, the Northern School of Art though, why would you like to come here? Would you come here? We are one of a small number of specialist art and design institutions across the country. We're not a small institution, we're about the same size as a large university's arts faculty. Our campus is compact, however, uh, you won't get lost here. Friendly, friendly community. Uh, we've only got five buildings with studios, lecture theatres and seminar rooms in, so you can find your way around easily and we all know each other. We are a special place. We are a creative, collaborative and welcoming community. We get to know you as an individual, supporting you to develop your success as a successful artist or designer. We've got an outstanding record here for our student employability. For the last four years of data, more than 96% of our graduates were in work or further study six months after they left us, which places us right at the top nationally. We only offer creative degrees and master's courses, obviously, as a specialist. And you're going to find out more about these shortly. But do check out our website after this event and follow us on social media. You'll get a real sense of who we are, what we do, and also learn about our graduate stories. All of our degrees have been developed very much uh, in collaboration with industry. And industry also helps us to deliver them. Our students are encouraged to collaborate across all the disciplines, just as you would in the real world. For example, all of our stage productions involve actors, they involve costumiers, they involve set designers and production students, and lighting and sound. When a filmmaker is developing a film, they will work with a similar group. And trust me, we're looking 
and we will be able to do all of that just in a different way, but we'll still be able to produce those under socially distanced conditions. Every year, we involve more than 70 industry professionals coming in and working with you in studios. Uh, we have an outstanding record for teaching and learning in this institution. Uh, when the Teaching Excellence Framework came in, TEP, uh, in 2017, we got gold and we've been gold ever since. You don't need to just believe me about the quality of what happens here as well. Uh, the National Student Survey, the last result on that showed that we've got an excellent rating for our overall satisfaction by students. Uh, that time around it was 91.8%, which is the highest in the north of England. So how do we achieve all of these outcomes and what makes us special? Well, we do it through investing in our facilities, whether it's cameras, studio space for students, uh, industry standard film and photography studios, uh, this theatre space that we're all sitting distanced in now, uh, print rooms, IT, editing suites, software, sewing and pattern cutting rooms, all of that and more is what you will get here as a specialist institution. We also achieve these results through giving you support, support in person, and that will continue no matter what conditions we're working under. Not just your program tutors, uh, but dedicated pastoral mental health support, support for autism, dyslexia, academic support, because sometimes creatives are not the best uh, initially thinking how to present themselves in an academic way but we also support you around your housing your finance and any hardships that you might be enduring at the time including financial ones so on your course you can expect very high levels of contact time uh, and that is going to continue under the new conditions uh, you will also have access all through the week to our technical demonstration staff in studios every day, Monday to Friday, who were there to support your creative practice. I already said we do this and achieve these results through working with the creative sector, and we do that on live projects, we do it through mentoring schemes with them, work experience and external show showcasing. So with us, you might work on a set that appears on a BBC TV series. You might make a costume for Killing Eve. You might design the cover of a national magazine. You might exhibit uh, a text, international textiles exhibition in Paris and sell your collection there. Or you might end up acting in a Ken Loach movie. All of these things are things that our students experience. We work with a vast range of external partner organisations as well and individuals. So, for example, Anne Butcher, the TV fashion historian, might give you personal feedback on your work. Jimmy Turrell, the graphic designer and videographer who's worked with Beck, uh, might work alongside you on a live project. Um, and you might even get Patrick Grant from the Sewing Bee coming along to critique your latest fashion design. One of our students working with Chris Riddell um, got a job with The Guardian before he even left us and got, got a weekly column with them. So all of these things are very much open to you and that's not all. Uh, here at the Northern School of Art we don't do a career service. We do a highly specialist employability and creative enterprise service which offers you personal and intensive support business planning, across marketing, funding, finance, as well as doing group seminars and networking events, allowing you to establish yourself on the creative scene. Um, we're just working with colleagues here from a community uh, enterprise called Empty Shop, and we've established a range of monthly socials, and you can join those socials now online if you look for creative social and Empty Shop CIC. That's something we're partnering with them on. Uh, the next one with Think Piece going live on Monday next week is actually around the film and TV industry and then there will be a live Q&A afterwards. We also have 
direct access to a brand new creative workspace for our graduates uh, where you can start your career off in an amazing just beautifully renovated Victorian workspace uh, with dedicated dedicated studio spaces and subsidised rents. As an art school, all of our staff, students and buildings are really at the heart of the creative scene here in the northeast of England uh, and obviously around Teesside and the Tees Valley in particular. And it's a very vibrant scene actually. Uh, we have got a whole range of festivals, whether that's the Festival of Thrift, uh, whether it's the Waterfront Festival, whether it's the Wintertide Festival, whether or not it's the Stockton International Riverside Festival or others. And even through all of our strange times now, these are still presences, even if they're online presences. But also there are pop-up galleries, there are events, there are scratch nights, there are comedy nights, there is a music scene here. So this is a very creative space. The school itself established uh, the Northern Festival of Illustration, which is an international event. It's one of the largest and most prestigious illustration events uh, in the UK. Uh, but it also, as I say, draws internationally. Uh, last time we ran it, we had artists from six different continents engaged with the festival, showing work, giving masterclasses and interacting with our students who also got the opportunity to show their work during that festival. So we are not a big city university, but we are only 30 minutes from Newcastle with its cultural buzz and its nightlife. But because we're a community, a real community, we do have a very active student life, which you're going to hear more about uh, from both students and our student liaison office in a little bit. But there's a lot going on. Again, comedy nights, film nights, role play events, and yeah, nights out in the pub. I want to say one last thing to you before I pass on. Uh, choosing where to study is a really big deal for you. Uh, you need to do your research. You need to find the right place and the right course for you. And we'll be honest, the Northern won't be right for everyone. And that's just fine. You've got to make the right choice for you. But we hope that our warm, welcoming and supportive community is something that you'll find attractive as a creative because you're just going to be spending your time with a range of other creatives that you will get a buzz off you will get energised by and your ideas will fly. You're now going to hear from different programme leaders and colleagues uh, about all of the different programmes on offer here for you to study at the Northern School of Art. So have a think about this and I'll now move on and let you learn about our programmes. Hello, my name is Jonathan Chapman and I'm Head of Fine Art at the Northern School of Art. The Northern School of Art is a very good place to study fine art. Not only do we have excellent resources and excellent teaching within the department, you will also be surrounded by lots of other people, lots of other students from really exciting courses such as graphic design, filmmaking, photography, textiles and also all the facilities and also all the teaching that they get as well is available to you on fine art. So if you wanted to go in and do silk screening, etc., or maybe take your work even into film, you have real expertise that is additional to the expertise that you get in the actual department. You will also have wonderful studios, great big studios, big spaces that will also we can change at times of degree show, we can change and make them into a space which is worthy of an exhibition space in a professional gallery. And around you, you'll be surrounded by both beautiful countryside and stunning the seashore and stunning dunes. But you'll also have these amazing relics of a sort of post industrial age, which are tremendously interesting to photograph and to visit and to draw and paint. And of course, we can also when you go out and we teach you video or photography, these are the sort of studios that we can provide for you. 
and we'll teach you to paint and we'll teach you to paint in a representational way if that's what you want to do or we'll teach you to paint in a in an abstract way if that's what you'd like to do we'll support you to use photography and digital imaging and image manipulation and we'll talk to you about video and performance and allow you to explore those if that's what you wish to we'll teach you lots of skills in in sculpture things like welding is specialist to us uh, and but more importantly perhaps we'll also teach you and help you and facilitate you to allow you to make work that doesn't fit comfortably in one environment this is somebody working in printmaking and photography somebody else making something that's part way between sculpture and performance and photography and painting and that's what a lot of our students do because of the facilities we have to offer and we'll also support your work and give you a, a knowledge of art history and contemporary art that you can really support your practice with. And as well as that, we'll also teach you how to have exhibitions and make you very confident about going out in the world and being able to be an artist. And I hope, I'm sure if you get to talk to our students, you'll find that they're very happy with the course and very satisfied. And I hope you will be too. Hello, my name is Neil Bushnell. I'm the programme leader for illustration for commercial application at the Northern School of Art. The illustration course is designed to help students get a really good understanding and a solid grasp of the requirements for working in industry once they've completed their degree course. Um, my background is working in animation and illustration and I've worked in film and television for the last 25 years. All of the staff on the course have a similar industry experience but in very different areas and what we do is we bring our collective understanding of how the industry works to the course and basically what that means is that all of our industry knowledge is up to date. Uh, we're teaching relevant skills to students and we're also introducing students to really relevant industry contacts. We work really closely with industry and we get uh, guest speakers coming in all of the time to uh, talk to the students and also to set live briefs, which is something that we feel is very important. We have excellent facilities on campus and students are encouraged to use those outside of their timetable sessions. So you can drop in and use a Cintiq suite uh, whenever you want. You can use the studio space and we have a really vibrant community feel within those spaces where students come together and can help and support each other with their work. We often have trips to exhibitions and live events and we cover a really wide range of practices within the course. So we have students who are looking to specialise in uh, picture book illustration or comics and graphic novels. Some are interested in editorial advertising um, or fashion illustration, things like that. And we have some who are also interested in animation. Hopefully over the three years, uh, you get a really good understanding of where you fit within the industry and you hopefully come out with a really, really strong portfolio and relevant contacts within industry so that you can start to develop your career outside of university. Hi there, I'm Olivia Watson and I'm the programme leader for the Graphic Design Programme and Digital Design and Advertising Programme. The graphics programme is a mix of both analogue and digital and um, typically for students perhaps that are from a have done a college um, course in art and design, whereas our digital design and advertising programme has a more advanced digital focus. Um, both areas of the industry are, are really showing no signs of slowing down, um, as you can imagine. Um, there's demand um, for graduates to not only have software skills though, but also to have problem solving skills and design communication skills, um, which is what we focus on in the programme. From the moment you sort of join the programme, you are part of a professional working design studio and you start to develop the kind of portfolio that's going to be really relevant in industry. When you arrive, you don't have to have any um, software skills. That's all going to be taught here, so don't worry about that. And um, the lecturers in the programme, which like myself, are all working graphic designers and digital designers and we're all from industry. So we're, we're teaching you what we know from our own experience, which really sort of brings teaching to life for our students. 
And um, first year briefs will typically include things like social media design and um, advertising, printmaking, publication, packaging, branding and um, building a really diverse portfolio. And we work on live and competition briefs and working with big names such as Adidas, Nike and um, Vogue. They were some of the, the companies that we worked on live competition briefs this year. And what makes us really different is we offer students time with staff to really develop a unique and specialist portfolio for every student that we that we that we bring through our three years of, of provision. Um, and that's what employers are really looking for and um, graduates that really stand out. And if you have any questions at all, please just get in touch. Thanks very much. We have a number of unique modules. Well, most modules are unique because photography is unique. Yeah. So we've got the first year you're going to do an exhibition. The second year you're going to make a photographic book and you're going to make a short film, little documentary, art film and also a pop promo. And then in the third year, your final year, you've got to write your dissertation and then you've also going to do an exhibition and a portfolio and then develop a website for work. So in the first term, you're going to learn about digital and film workflow, photographic workflow, how to use large format cameras in the field and also in the studio, how to use digital cameras and then also how to get the images out of the cameras on your computer or into the dark rooms and then up onto the walls. We've got a range of good partnerships and links with people in industry, but the main ones, the AOP, that means Association of Photographers. And what they do, they're the kind of, they're the governing body for photography in the UK. And membership to this specialist club entitles you to access to an, over 500 photographers who are shooting on a regular day-to-day -day basis, events, insights into kind of talks, job vacancies, internships, and generally photographers have to pay quite a lot of money to join, but because we pay a subscription, you guys get it for free. That's if you come here, of course. We've got a range of people who've gone on to work in the industry. The one who stands out at the moment is a photographer called Boo George. Now, Boo's interesting. He came to us with a passion for shooting people, and we developed that passion by encouraging him to use different types of cameras and getting into different types of locations. And his real kind of interest was going out and about into location and shooting, made some really interesting kind of documentary pictures. And it's that work that then got him through the door to shoot fashion. So now he's shooting fashion people. Hello, my name is Mike Boyle. Um, I'm the programme leader for film, TV and theatre production at the Northern School of Art. Um, I've been asked to uh, say a few words about the programme and what it entails. Um, so the first thing to talk about is it's a really collaborative kind of um, uh, uh, programme. Uh, not only do you get to work with obviously with your fellow film and theatre kind of students, you get to on certain projects collaborate with the acting programme, uh, you work with the production design, look at their sets, uh, also sometimes costumes. On the theatre side we do some you know big end of year projects, but on the film side as well, you get to work uh, co collaboratively with other teammates. Um, and for an example, in your first kind of um, term, you will um, will teach you how to produce, write, direct, uh, a film and edit your own production. You'll also be to told how to format the scripts and you'll learn the history of kind of film, uh, TV and theatre and the drama side of it. Uh, then uh, you'll eventually probably have worked on five or six projects at first year. Uh, we work with live clients. Uh, we work with um, uh, major kind of competitions going into to kind of level five. You do the, the uh, Super 16 mil Kodak Awards, which is like the most prestigious in the country. Uh, and our students enter that. You only can enter that if you actually work on film. Uh, you'll also be doing, we, you've also got access to our, um, our Black Magic cameras, our uh, uh, state of the art TV studio, our um, completely revamped theatre with some amazing lighting and sound in it, which is kind of really cool. Uh, and again, it's unusual how we all collaborate on different programmes and we give you that experience, what it's like as best we can, 
the real life industry. And by the end of the kind of three years, you'll hopefully have worked on a minimum, an absolute minimum of 10 projects, either they might be film, TV or theatre, uh, and you can specialise whichever way you want to go. By the time you reach the level six, you'll, you'll know kind of what you want to do and stuff, and you'll have tried everything, you'll have worked in every kind of arena, and then you can go hopefully confident into your future uh, and and uh, get work in the, in the employment industry um, where you can specialise, uh, or you know you might direct a film, or you might direct a piece of theatre, that kind of thing. So hopefully, um, it's quite an exciting course. Come and come and look us up. Um, you can look us up. Um, this is a bit where I have to look at the paper. Uh, Northernart.ac.uk, or just Google Northern School of Art and have a look at the film, TV, and theatre production course. It's cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
Harry Potter, Dumbo, Jungle Book, Prometheus and Star Wars. We are also proud of our graduates who have progressed on to other careers, such as our therapy and teacher training, using the practical skills that they've developed on the programme. We look forward to helping you with the development of your career within this exciting industry. Hello, I'm John Noble and I'm a lecturer on the Visual Effects Model Making Program at the Northern School of Art. Now, model making today can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but what it means to us is high-end quality models, whether they're practical and you can hold them in your hand, or digital and they only ever revolve around on a screen, or somewhere in the middle where you build your model on the computer, 3D print it and then finish it to a high-end standard using practical techniques. In the first year of the programme, you'll be taught pretty much on a 50-50 basis, um, practical skills and digital skills, and you just get to hone these techniques, get better, try a lot of things out, and it all starts with problem solving. There isn't a button, there isn't a magic button on Photoshop. You have to have that creativity inside, burning to get out, and then you will find the solution. If you can sketch the front, the back, the top, the bottom, the inside, the outside of something, you can build it before you even pick up a stick of wood. We have to do the academic side as well. So in first year, you're going to study the history of visual effects model making in film. We've also been to the Aesthetica Short Film Festival in York to attend masterclasses by Industrial Light and Magic, Framestar and Aardman. The school invites in industry specialists throughout the year where students can learn silicon mould making and casting. Many of the lecturers across the school have one put in industry themselves with their own freelance careers and make props for films, for instance. We have contact in industry and direct connection with the front line. And as changes happen, we're very aware of them, that we're looking forwards and working towards your future. But we've had lots of exciting work experience from a BFI funded short horror film to a work experience down in London on a Sky Atlantic TV series. The opportunities for collaboration are massive and across the school itself. We all cross over and everybody raises their game incrementally. You'll find what's right for you. You might hopefully be excited and uh, surprised by what you've learned. Some people come in purely wanting to be model makers and then before they know it, they're doing simulated building destruction. I've just been looking at some of the newspaper articles that's been printed in the newspapers this weekend and they're sort of full of scary stories about the future and unemployment and what's going to happen. And I can understand that probably for some students you're a bit nervous about is this the right time to get into education but can I tell you for some students not only is this going to be the biggest opportunity this is the most exciting time to get into education and if you just give me three minutes of your time I'll explain why. You see, these stories of fear have been around with us for years. Anything from financial crashes to the doomsday book in 2000, and then right up to the financial crash only a few years ago. And every single time people feared what was gonna happen in the future, and yet here we are. You see, the world didn't fall apart and the world didn't end. Um, but one thing's for sure is this opportunity will end. See, things aren't going to change for a long time and the future is digital. And if you want to start investing your career now, that's what you need to invest in is a digital future. So if you're a blogger or a vlogger or you want to create your own channel and you want to start selling things online or becoming some sort of marketeer within the digital world, there has never been a better time to do it. So what are you going to get from the creative influencing degree? Well, the degree itself is based on the film and television degree that runs at the moment. And the foundation in the technical side is very much aligned to that. So within the first year, you're going to learn about video editing, sound production, lighting, all the things that you need to get a good production together. In the second year, we're going to take the production skills that you learn from the first year and then start building them into marketing strategies and products. This is the time when you'll decide, do you want your own channel? What type of creative influencer do you want to be? Or maybe you just want to sell things online. In the third year, we'll start teaching about business principles, accounting, how to run your business. We'll also start to develop your products and try and make your first income stream. Now, 
nobody can guarantee that a business will ever be successful. And if anybody tells you that, they're lying. But what we can guarantee you is that we can teach you all the tools that is necessary in order to make a successful online business. So all you've got to ask yourself now is what type of person are you? Are you the type of person who looks at something and sees an opportunity or are you the type of person who sees a problem? So if you're interested in either creating your own channels, selling online, becoming a creative influencer, then this is the degree for you. So please give us a call. We'll answer any questions and hopefully I look forward to seeing you. Take care. Hello, I'm Jane Havakin. I'm Programme Leader for BA Honours Costume Interpretation with Design. I've worked at the Northern School of Art for the last 14 years, but prior to this I had a career making and designing costumes for theatre and film, um, including people like Spice Girls. All the staff on the programme have had a costume background, whether this is in tailoring, theatre, opera, and we all continue to work within the industry. So why study here at the Northern School of Art? Firstly, we have an excellent location for film and TV. A lot of movies and TV shows are filmed here in the northeast of England, including shows like Victoria, Harry Potter, Transformers. It is definitely fast becoming the new centre for film and TV making. We also have excellent space for students to study, including sewing studios, dye labs, and unusually a costume archive. Students also collaborate with other departments like acting and production design and the film courses, putting on live theatre shows in our purpose-built theatre or creating films again in a purpose-built film studio or out on location. Students can also collaborate with textiles in their studios, dye labs, creating unique fabrics for their costumes. We have fantastic links with industry, which can be either live projects with companies like the Bose Museum, Beamish or Creature Encounter Puppets or for work experience. Some students have recently worked in TV shows like Netflix, The English Game, His Dark Materials or with theatre like the Royal Opera House. We also have a visiting lecturers like Michelle Gallagher from the Game of Thrones or people like Sally Ann Pavan who is a milliner for theatre but she has clients like um, Kate Middleton and they come in and work with the students or also do workshops. We also have some of our graduates come in and talk to the students about what it's like graduating and then moving on to employment. And they've worked on shows like uh, Endeavour, Doctor Who and Fleabag. We have such a great success with our students gaining employment in the costume industry, as well as more recently, one of our graduates received a nomination for Excellence in Costume Television Award for the Designers Guild. This is because we fully prepare our students for employment or postgraduate education through a unique programme of studying, including everything from pattern cutting, designing, sewing costumes, tailoring, millinery and leather moulding, all supported by research and inquiry into the industry. I hope this has given you a brief introduction to the programme, but for further any queries, please contact our website. Hello, my name is Dr. Carol Harris. I'm the subject area leader for Fashion with Body Contour. If you were to join us at the Northern School of Art, you would cover topics such as pattern cutting, illustration. Uh, we do computer aided fashion design where you learn about the OptiTex computerized system. We also cover things such as marketing, branding. We have worked with local companies where the owner would have taken all of our students uh, on work placements and then employed them if he could. In level five, you would do, we offer um, industry projects where in the past our students have worked with local companies. We have worked with a local girl band who have done festival wear uh, for the festivals that they were going to attend. We've worked with a local sportswear company where our students all did work placements and the company director said the greatest compliment he could pay our students was that he would offer them all jobs 
In level six, you will do a project that will span the whole year from research project and preparation through dissertation, final major project, through to a final collection that will be exhibited at the end of the year show. The equipment available at the Northern School of Art is quite extensive. We have a large sewing room that students are able to use that have industry sewing machines, overlockers, felt hemming machines, embroidery machines. We also work with the textiles department where we're able to go down and spend a week with them, which enables us to use the textiles facilities, which then helps students in the latter part of the degree. We have our OptiTech system where students can use the pattern cutting, grading, lay planning, marker making, which are all essential skills for looking for positions in the industry. Our student placements include students have gone to All Saints and we have a student that has shown at the Paris runway shows. Hi there. My name is Jane Hemmins and I'm programme leader for the BA Honours Textiles and Surface Design programme at the Northern School of Art. In terms of um, what you'll study if you come to do our degree, um, in the first year you will explore lots and lots of different skills within print, dyeing, embroidery, um, drawing and painting and also contextual studies so that you will develop your art history and your design history knowledge um, and be able to contextualise your own work too. Um, we have really amazing contacts with industry in that we work with a variety of high street companies and we also exhibit internationally at a variety of trade shows including Premier Vision in Paris, New Designers in London and we've also exhibited at Decazit in Brussels and Surtex in New York. Um, we also work quite closely with the Boys Museum and have exhibited there a number of times in the past few years. Um, our work experience programme is really exciting. We work with our students to find a work experience that's relevant to their future career aspirations, whether that is um, in teaching, designing, um, working in styling, buying, merchandising. We have lots of different outcomes for our students. Um, recently, we've had students do work experience with Timorous Beasties in Glasgow, Sandra Rhodes in London, um, Ted Baker, and also Gillian Arnold in Darlington. So we have a really good range of work experiences, whether you would like to explore that from a regional perspective or if you want to go to London or even New York. Um, our modules are quite unique within the, um, the kind of textiles and surface design HA experience. We offer modules that will explore the technical skills and the design skills um, needed to be a surface designer but we also offer a module called make in first year where students develop really good um, construction skills to allow people to then have a career within um, the designer maker side of our industry and that's quite a rarity most degrees specialize in one or the other um, the other thing that the Northern School of Art has is absolutely amazing resources. Our print rooms, dye lab, exposure room, and our studios that have individual work bays are second to none. <clears throat> and we have probably the best resources for surface design in the country, I would say. And we also have access to laser cutters and we collaborate closely with other departments to share kits that students might want to use and also tech technician demonstrators that students might want to work with. Um, so yeah, that's a little introduction to textiles and surface design at the Northern School of Art. Thanks, bye.
Hi everybody, my name is Malcolm Clements. I'm the coordinator of Contextual Studies, Scholar Activity and Research at the Northern School of Art. And I'm here today to talk to you about the new MA Design History. Now the MA Design History has been written specifically to allow you to focus the study of design history to your own interests as a burgeoning historian. Um, what I mean by that, for example, is Whilst you may be studying um, score histories of design, what's been written about design history, um, the ways people think about it at certain periods of time, um, how design history is applied to things like anthropology, cultural studies, gender studies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the whole purpose behind it is to allow you to become the type of dis um, design historian that you want to be. Um, for example, if we study design history and you want to think about being a specialist whose interest is in something like textiles, you can do that. If you wanted to become a costume historian, you can do that. You could be um, a person who wants to study, for example, visual culture, in other words, fine art and photography, for example, and look at those as a piece of design or a piece of material culture. Um, so that you could apply this to maybe working in an archive in the future, you can do so. So the the um, the options available for any student are wide ranging and they're based mainly on your own interests um, and aspirations of the future. And also the MA Design History has been written specifically with work in mind because my own experience when I graduated in 1997 was that I wasn't 100% sure where I wanted to apply my design history um, as far as work's concerned. And very quickly I did fall into teaching, which I obviously love because I've been doing it for decades now. But I'm very aware um, then and now that the, the study of design history as a career choice can sometimes be seem to be very limiting when in reality it actually isn't. So we've written a professional studies module in this MA which allows you to focus on the way in which design history can be used as a career choice in things like museums, um, um, writings on design history, the antiques trade for example, um, further studies such as PhD in the future, um, working in museums and galleries, all those kind of things are, are possible through the study of design history. So we're very excited about this program, hope you are and if you want to know anything more about what we have on offer or what where your interest may be in the study of design history, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you, bye. Hello, I'm Dr. Carol Harris, Programme Leader for the MA in Creative Design Enterprise. It's a distinctive programme that will allow innovative projects through the use of latest, latest technology while being underpinned with business skills for the creative industry. The course has a broad creative practice that includes media, graphics and 3D design, fashion, textiles and costume to take your ideas to the next level. Part of the application process, uh, you will submit a project that will be evaluated to ensure it's sustainable and that we can support you through the ex through the expertise and resources available to ensure a successful outcome. Through the interview process, applicants will need to show evidence of initiative and personal responsibility, decision making in complex and unpredictable situations and independent learning ability required for continual professional development. The programme will cover brand marketing, finance, market theory and market segmentation with a strong orientation towards the future realised through forecasting in both finance and marketing. We will also provide you with a diagnostic toolbox necessary to realise a commercial opportunity as well as help develop a range of employability re related skills to include self-management, entrepreneurship as applied to creative industry. The MA will run from September, from September to September and consist of four modules. The first module is a research module that introduces you to interdisciplinary research for a creative industry with the goal of establishing solid research and writing skills and then a foundation in theory and methodology. The second is a creative enterprise and ideation module. The module is divided into two parts. The first will place emphasis on business and the second on ideation. Learning will be enhanced by working collaboratively alongside other students, industry professionals and academic staff. The third module is studio practice and design where you'll be required to formalise your intentions. Exploratory making sits at the heart of this part of the programme. Emphasis is placed on exploring the problems and opportunities that present themselves throughout this technical phase with a focus on fabrication, materiality, innovation and innovation, user experience, audience and market. The final module will be 
resolution, presentation and self-reflection. You will establish ways of presenting and disseminating the outcomes of your project in, way that's, in ways that communicate to both specialist and non-specialist audiences. The module provides the opportunity for you to realise your thesis project. Your final project should summarise the total thesis trajectory. Hello everybody, my name is Alberto Dumba and I'm 21 years old and I'm studying at the Northern School of Art. So I'd just like to talk about my first experience here when I first came here. So at the very start, it was very wonderful and welcoming because I actually joined late because I was filming on a Ken Loach film. So when I came, I thought oh, people wouldn't really get to know me. So when I came late, everyone made me feel welcome. I had a couple of friends show me about and my lecturer, Johnny, is an amazing lecturer. He showed me all of the all of the places that I needed to see and the lecturers here and the staff here are just very friendly. Open days and welcome talks are very important because they let you get comfortable with the place so you know where to go. And also on the welcome talks, you get to meet wonderful staff like everyone's so friendly. You'll get loads of hi, how are you? And now I get good morning and everyone's pretty much knows my name because everyone's just so friendly and welcoming. At the start of the year as well, there was a freshers night which was really good because I got everyone to mingle, mingle and like everyone from different courses in different buildings to make friends. And now I have friends from different courses, different buildings, different year groups, and everyone's just made me feel welcome. And I feel like once you make these connections, these are going to be the people you're going to be working with. And it's good to socialize with people as well as work with others. Hello, welcome to this June Life Talk as part of the Northern School of Art Virtual Open Day. My name's Dan. Um, I'm a student liaison officer at school, a role which means I work with students from across the school and do bits such as um, student union and student voice. I'm also joined by Gemma. Do you want to introduce yourself, Gemma? Hello, uh, I'm Gemma. I'm the communications officer of the student union and my role is to just communicate the thoughts of the students to the higher up people in the school. Cool. So have you enjoyed your life as a SU communications officer? Yeah, yeah it's been fun. Got to go to lots of events, plan events and yeah, it's been Good. <laughs> all in your first year too. Um, so yeah. um, first of all we'll talk a little bit about the students union. So the students union is run by students for students um, and it means that it's all in the image of the students and the students kind of decide what it all means. Um, we have S uh, the ace SU executives um, in loads of different roles. Yeah, so we've got Gemma, Gemma who does communications, we've got um, a student president, we've got two vice presidents, we've got um, an activities officer, we've got a sustainability officer, we've got LGBTQ, and it's all in kind of a different role. Uh, do you want to talk about what you kind of do as part of the um, SU team? Um, together, we, like all of our different sections, work together to create a better environment for the students. And we also work like highly on student life, so extracurriculars. We also help plan and organise like clubs and societies. Um, yeah. including like board game societies, the LGBTQ society, um, the Christian Union, things like that. Yes, yeah, so there's lots of different like uh, clubs and societies we have, we run activities and um, different programmes do their own events as well, so they do it for fundraising. Um, so there's like kind of lots going on and our main thing is making sure students have the opportunity to create their own student experience and that's kind of the big key thing for us. Uh, Within the school, my um, my role sits within the student experience team. So we have a team that's really kind of all about making sure the student experience is the best it can be. Um, we have loads of clubs and societies as well, such as like kickboxing, self-defense. It's all driven by what the students want. So it all comes down to what the students want from their student experience. We try to deliver as best we can. And um, so kind of in the last year, we've done stuff like uh, we've created a coffee shop. So a coffee shop which is going to be run by the students. So that came from our meetings, so our SU meetings. Um, we've got our own um, student union space, so we've got a bar, and we run regular bar nights, and students can put on their own kind of thing as well. You've done some bits before in the past, haven't you, Gemma? Yeah, I've done a, like, a zombie apocalypse night, so we've got actors yeah. involved, and it was like immersive, and it was really cool. Yeah, it was really good, and we've had stuff like musical nights, we've had um, vinyl nights, and it kind of it's whatever the students' interests are, and we put on and can run alongside the bar night, or it can be um, external stuff as well. So we've had like running groups, we've had um, summer balls. There's all sorts going on really. It's kind of you can get what you want as, from as much as you put in, you can get back as well. So she just really have like a say in what they do. And there's also opportunities as well, which is not kind of the SU. So it's um, you'll get opportunities for your programs and um, through the wider school as well. So um, we've had stuff before like um, students on graphics made a big mural for the Radio One big weekend. Um, 
We've had stuff like Church Street Revival, so we've had exhibitions, loads of exhibitions are going on, students are on their own, and um, we also have alumni as well and students in the community, so for example, like middle of a weekend, there's been loads of kind of exhibitions and lots you can get uh, involved with. Um, some students went to Chernobyl as well, so that new different opportunities. You've done bits for acting as well, haven't you? So. Yeah, um, we team up with local theatres and we go and watch shows there, and then we also perform some shows there, and yeah, we collaborate with them a lot. Yeah, so working through the arc and um, yeah. all sorts going on. So there's plenty of opportunities as well. Have you took much as well in this kind of first year? Pardon? Have you took many opportunities in your first year as well? Um, yeah, um, I worked with the arc to perform. The, like it was a rare show. It was called The Home. So we had to work like oh, cool. pretend that we were in a care home. And um, yeah, it was like an immersive theatre, but it was only performed three times globally, and I was a part of that. Oh, brilliant. So was that with people outside of the school as well? No, it was set up through, it was like set up through uni through ARC. So, oh, cool. yeah. Yeah, so there's lots of opportunities that you can do within the school, but really loads of like external ones as well, isn't there? So, mm -hmm. can't become part of the creative community whilst you're still yeah. at the school. So, that's a really positive thing. We've had um, students work with um, stuff like Killing Eve as well, so costume students have worked on Killing Eve, on Doctor Who, so there's plenty of opportunities. And what we find as well is that um, a lot of our students not only kind of um, get involved with the creative community, but they drive it as well. So we've got students and staff that run their own exhibitions, have their own museums and gallery spaces. And yeah, there's plenty going on and lots to get involved with. So the last bit we're going to talk about is student voice. So we're really keen on like, making sure there's like a really strong student voice. And the way we do that is through partnerships. So for us, it's not just about kind of the school tell, telling students what we want from them. It's partnership and we get students involved at every level. So we have student rep meetings, we have student assemblies, we have um, SU, uh, we've got a student governor as well. So our student governors electors and they sit on the corporation board. Gem has been involved with loads of kind of meetings and groups as well. And it means that any kind of decision that's made, there's like a student voice on it and that's really important to us. Yeah. So yeah, you've seen plenty of opportunities to do stuff as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. And student reps are like, it's two in every class, so every voice is heard, which is like key yeah. for us. Yeah, we meet like twice a year as well. So what our main aim is really, you've got a really big opportunity to feed back. And we just want it to be so that the, the school is in the image of the students and we have better diversity through that and we just have better experience for it too. Uh, and we've also got students as well who sit on like national panels, so our previous SU president sat on um, the OFS national panel so it means that the voice isn't just heard in the school and it's outside as well and just shows plenty of opportunities to get involved with. I think that's it from us so we've uh, had plenty of opportunities to talk about student life if you've got any questions feel free to get in touch. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm Danny. I'm on the acting course and I'm the sustainability officer for the student union. My name is Gemma. I'm on acting number four and I'm the communications officer of the student union. My name is Matthew Orford. I'm on digital design advertising and I'm the welfare officer for the SU. I enjoy being a part of the union. I also enjoy the collaboration of the university as I get to work with multiple different courses for multiple different projects. Probably the community aspect because I feel like at this point I nearly recognise everyone as I'm walking around. I speak to people from nearly every single course and everyone's just so lovely. Everyone's so supportive and everyone is here because they really love what they're doing. Um, I can wander into film or acting uh, or illustration and ask if anyone needs help or if I can have some help because I can't draw or act or make films. Um, and there's, there's never a question here. Um, there's that openness here, and there's a freedom to be whoever you want to be. It makes life a lot more easy. Everyone's just doing something they love, and it's nice to be in a community where you can say something like, oh, I want to be an actor, and everyone's like, yeah, go for it, go be an actor. I enjoy being a student in the School of Art. It is amazing. My expectations of this school have been exceeded and still continue to be exceeded with every day because I'm constantly surprised at the support we get from our tutors and the amount of time they put into everything. And I know that if ever I need help, even if it's nothing to do with work at all, I can go to one of them and I'll get it straight away. And if they can't help me, they'll find someone who can. I came here to the non-school of arts for an applicant day 
and I met my program leader and he was just so friendly and so down to earth and he just made me feel like I was at home and I spoke to a few of the student ambassadors and a few members of the student union and it just seemed like a place I wanted to be, like a community I wanted to belong to. It's, it's, it's one of those where you walk into the uni and you, you talk to the people here and then everything just kind of makes sense quite quick. If somebody wants to come here for September, I'd say just come along, come to an open day, see if you like it because I never thought that I'd like to come to university in general until I came to this university on the applicant day and I was sold. So if people want to come, just come down for an open day, a shadow day, anything, just come and see it for yourself and we'll prove how amazing we are. Hi, my name is Teresa and I'm the manager of the student services team. The student services team are there to provide our students with advice, guidance and support on the wider aspects of student life. That could be advice, guidance, support on independent living, or it could be around the more emotional aspects of mental health and supporting students' wellbeing. The advice, guidance and support that we offer is very wide and varied, but it can include things like supporting our students with disabilities and health problems, providing additional learning support, providing support with mental health and wellbeing, support around student finance and also accommodation. In terms of supporting our students with disabilities and health problems, the first bit of advice that we would give is to apply for disabled student allowance. We advise you to do this as early as possible as the process does take a little bit of time to work through and we do like our students to have that support that they need in place as soon as possible. The other thing that we do for our students with disabilities is liaise quite closely with our academic colleagues. This is to make sure that we've got any reasonable adjustments that are needed, make sure that they are in place within the studios and classrooms and are readily available if, if and when required. We also work with specialist providers of disability support as a lot of the disability support that comes through Disabled Student Allowance will be provided by external providers. So we will liaise with them to make sure that that support's in place for you. A high proportion of our students that come to us um, have dyslexia. So we have got a, dis a specialist support for our dyslexic students and that consists of specialist study skills support. That is based on an individual one-to-one -one assessment of that student's needs and can consist of things like help with spelling strategies, planning, organisational skills um, and specialist study skills support. In terms of wellbeing and mental health support, we work with our student body to put on a range of wellbeing activities and we also get external providers in to support us with that. We also have a school counsellor who is available on site um, to help and support our students that might have a little bit more uh, need for that kind of emotional support. The team can also offer advice around student finance, applying for student loans and the evidence required for this. And they can also, if students find themselves in financial difficulties, offer advice and support to help them with this. This might be budgeting, money management advice, or it might be pointing them in the direction of how to apply for our emergency hardship fund.
accommodation. The school has three halls of residence which offer a variety of different living arrangements to suit individual needs, preferences and budgets. Living in halls is a great first step to moving away from home. It provides a great opportunity to learn about living independently whilst also still having a support network behind you if you require it. Support can be gained from other students that are living in halls with you or from student services or third team who manage the student halls of residence on our behalf. Living in halls also provides a great opportunity to collaborate with other students from different courses. It's a great place for meeting new friends and it also provides an opportunity to socialise with other people because each Hall of Residence has a lovely communal area that is great for socialising and meeting up with friends. All of our halls are safe and secure. They're all accessible by individual secure key fob access and they all have a 24 hour emergency call system for advice and support if required outside of school hours. The rent for halls of residence is all inclusive. All bills are included in the cost of living in the halls. So that includes laundry facilities, electricity and internet, for example. All the halls of residence are within walking distance of the campus and they are all within walking distance of the local train station, the bus station, cinema, theatre, shops, restaurants and pubs. So it's not too far to return from a night out. If halls are not for you, we also work with local private landlords um, to offer student only accommodation and we work very closely with them to ensure that the accommodation that they offer is of a high standard. So in summary, student services are there to provide support and advice for the wider aspects of student life and for any emotional support and wellbeing advice that our students require. If you don't know where to turn and have a query or a concern, the student services team is a good place to start. And you can contact us by emailing hestudentservices at northernart.ac.uk or by calling us on 01429 8584 one zero and we'll hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Okay, so the first question, um, what are the first few weeks going to be like with social distancing? 
Okay, Liam, I think I'll probably answer that one. Obviously, things will be different this September uh, from the usual experience. So anyone who's joining us as a first year student in September will get a two week induction period, which will uh, introduce them to their workshops, to the studio spaces, and just as critically, help support them in understanding how to use and access the online systems for teaching that we're going to be using for as long as we have to, because we don't intend to keep doing that for any longer than we have to. There will be some social distancing, obviously, because we want to keep people safe. So, for example, we will limit the numbers of people in particular studios or workspaces at any one time, but we will extend our timetabled hours to ensure that everybody gets full access to studios and workshops. We're also looking at ways of creating more social events which are socially distanced but we've already kind of done that in the past you know we because we're next to the beach we can do things on the beach in a socially distanced way and yeah we get sunshine in the northeast of england so that's doable so we're going to be we're still looking at ways to actually make the community and social side work but yeah there'll be social distancing but all of our studio facilities all of the teaching spaces will still be open. You will see faces. You will learn in physical studios. And that's probably the best thing to say. OK, thank you. So the next question is, if somebody wants to apply and the school is closed, how can they have their interview? Oh, it's all questions for me up front. Um, well, you can have an interview online with us. We are using Skype. We've always given people an option to use Skype interviews or we can do interviews through MS Teams. So that allows us to actually view digital imagery at the same time as talking to you. So you can really talk through portfolio. Um, I guess. Johnny, how about auditions? Yeah, um, we actually had an audition just on Wednesday. Um, so the students sent me in um, two monologues that they would normally do. Um, and then we just did the interview um, yeah, over Skype, um, off to a place and he's, he's coming in September. So um, yeah, it's, it's really, really easy. It's not a problem at all. But obviously, if we're thinking about September 2021, as soon as we can, we'll start doing physical interviews again as well. Great. Uh, this is probably a question for you, Johnny. So I'm interested in the acting course, uh, but I want to be a film and TV actor. Is the acting course more theatre or film acting? Cool. So the acting degree is active stage and screen. Um, and it's probably um, about a third of it is acting for camera, two thirds of it acting for theatre. Um, and that's partly because um, there's a lot more to cover in regards to theatre and theatre has fed into acting and performance um, on screen by its nature. Um, but also basically a lot of the techniques, actor training is theatre training. Um, so in terms of voice, uh, in terms of physicality, uh, that all comes from theatre. I mean, it's just about how you apply it for the relative mediums. Um, but you're straight in front of the camera in the first um, assessment. I mean, every assessment pretty much has a theatre live performance aspect and an active camera aspect. Uh, but we also do acting for voiceovers and radio as well as part of the module. So you get a real broad um, spectrum. And I would say if you want to be an actor, don't sort of pigeonhole yourself. Um, you should just be happy to get the work, I would say. Great. Uh, so the next question is specific to illustration, but I think it can be answered in regard to all of the courses, actually. So it's saying, is the illustration course collaborative? Yeah, I'd say all of the courses are collaborative um, graphics and illustration in particular are very collaborative in terms of the briefs that we work on um, and the live projects we work on and placement opportunities. Um, but across the board, every program is uh, very collaborative. For example, I'm head of graphics and you know we work often with the acting program. We do um, all of your marketing and all of your um, branding for plays and so on. Um, whereas we have um, Johnny, Johnny's programs all sort of work together in terms of the acting program with film and TV. Um, and that's across the board. Um, other examples are things like textiles, working with the fashion course um, and, um, and 
and, and the collaboration between all the programs, you can really choose what you want to do. Really, you can you can literally walk to a different building and be working alongside those students. And within those studios, it isn't um, you know one building or one sort of course where you just you know you only know those people. Everybody kind of mingles, and, and that naturally leads on to collaboration between the different courses. I think it's worth saying as well, just specifically on the illustration. Uh, for example, there are modules relating to animation in there, which link across not just to graphic design, but also into our film and TV production side too. Thank you. Um, so the next question is, I'm really interested in textiles. Will I have my own workspace? I think I'd best answer that um, in two ways, Lynn. Uh, initially, uh, with social distancing, uh, it's unlikely this September that we're going to be able to offer the individual bays in studios that we traditionally do. We're still looking at that in terms of how we might manage that with social distancing, but I wouldn't want to promise it for this September. Normally, yeah, you will be getting your own workspace as you would for either graphics or illustration, all of those things, but in this case, I'm not going to guarantee something I can't um, absolutely promise to you. Thank you. My A-level provider only had two creative subjects, uh, photography and fine art. Will these still be valid for applying to illustration? Yes, definitely. So with anything to do with an art and design course, uh, that portfolio is enough to demonstrate how creative you are and um, we have lots of students that will come from a art and design background and wanting to do a photography course without any um, any sort of specialist training in photography or likewise with graphic design. We have lots of students that will do art and, and have a fine art and um, background for the two years before they come come to us and, and have have um, no sort of software skills. Everything will be taught when you when you come here um, and we, we don't anticipate that you already are an illustrator and with all of the illustration skills, that's what you come here for. Likewise with graphics or any other course, those skills will be taught here. I think that when we do interview students, we obviously want to know that you have a real passion for the subject you're applying for, but we aren't anticipating that you already have those skills. And um, it's just the ability to be really creative and talk passionately about why you want to work in this industry, I think is, is really key. Um, so, so don't worry about what kind of portfolio you have at this moment, um, but you know, make sure that you are um, you know, practicing um, and, and sort of looking into the areas that you want to really go into so that we can, you know, we can really feel that passion when you, when you sort of talk to us. So part of, the, part of the interview process is your portfolio, but also it's very much the conversations we have with you. And hopefully that's where it will come across that you are really interested in illustration. Thank you for that, Olivia. The next question is, an international community and environment is very important to me. So is there a big international presence at the school and in the area? Well, um, we do have students uh, from across the European Union uh, who currently study here. So from that perspective, yes, uh, there is an international presence. The northeast of England has a very diverse population, much the same as the rest of the UK. So there are a number of different uh, communities established. So I, I think the other thing to say is that the art scene in the Northeast is very outward looking. So a lot of the events, the festivals and programmed activity that happen up here uh, are very international focusing. And there are strong links with both design communities, artistic communities, uh, overseas, which you would be able to get involved in. I think that's probably the best way of answering. Yeah, and I think we'll look. You look at a range of practitioners and ideas that have come from all around the world. You know, just because our programs are based within England and the Northeast, the ideas from the world come into that. So it's definitely got an international flavour. So. Okay, uh, one for Johnny. Uh, what's the ratio of practical and theory? Um, so on acting specifically, um, you're talking 99% practical really. Um, so we do um, a theory module which runs in the first semester, uh, but that's always linked to the practical stuff. 
Um, so we might be looking at the work of Jacques Lecoq practically in physical fitness sessions with me, um, and I'll be able to contextualise that in a wider sense. But it's never like this is theory over here and this is practice over here. It, it's all linked. Um, and yeah, so you'd be spending all your time in one of our acting studios on your feet doing some acting because um, that's the way to learn about it rather than just, you know, it's not about writing essays when you get out into industry. It's about can you perform and do your job? And can you tell us, Johnny, how frequently you put on performances in the year? Yeah, you do two um, main productions. Um, so in the first year, you do two main productions here in our um, theatre. Um, as you get into the second and third year, you'll also do performances at ARC, our local arts centre um, that we're um, education partner with. Uh, you do performances in their main house in the second and third year, and their main house is uh, 270 seats. Um, but in, even in the first year, you'll do performances at ARC uh, in their studio space as well. So you'll be doing two main house performances at least every year. Um, and then also you'll be creating your own work, um, which we have set showcases, um, and that's on top of um, the short films that you'll be in that we screen here and at other external venues and also the radio plays that you'll also be in that we also um, put out as well. Great, uh, so this is a question from somebody that studies at our sister site in Middlesbrough. Um, so they go to the Middlesbrough campus. Um, is it much different here in Hartlepool? Yes, there's certainly that next level. So those of you that um, potentially are at our sister site at the FB College, it's certainly a step up into a different kind of way of working. Um, you have a lot more autonomy about the way about your timetables, about the way that you're working, how you're using the studio. Um, it is a very different feel from college. However, I'd like to think that the Northern School of Art has a real um, feel about it and when you whether you're in our campus or that campus and um, we are still very much the same community in the sense that we are very friendly and everybody knows each other and we have lots of collaboration so the, the real good things about Northern School of Art exist in both both campuses but certainly you'll have a very different unique and um, university experience at this campus um, which is which is very different from your you know your college uh, counterpart just like the NEFB college will be very different in terms of you know how how you will sort of uh, spend your nine till five or your nine till you know bedtime sort of thing so it is very different a different feel okay um, so this question uh, I already own a t-shirt business can I use this towards my projects if I study graphics um, but I suppose that could relate to anybody that has so that comes in with a business idea that they're running on the side and how they could incorporate that into the studies. Yeah, um, we have lots of students who have small businesses um, on the side of their, their work and that's like Liam says across um, all the different programmes and um, we have lots of students that do um, uh, that are particularly interested in merchandise and setting up kind of um, t-shirt businesses or, um, or that sort of thing in graphics. And um, we also, um, yes, you could certainly bring that into your project work. We also have screen printing studios and other things like that, where you can actually, um, students learn those skills too. So anything that you're doing on the side can um, be involved in your project work, um, especially in second and third year, you really get to start to choose your own projects. And um, and lots of our students do, do choose to do something quite um, entrepreneurial um, and enterprise based. Thank you, Olivia. The next question is, are internships organised through the university or do we get them ourselves? I think that one's uh, for me, Liam. Uh, we don't do internships. What we do do is work experience placements within industry. And you get a choice as to how you can organise those. Sometimes uh, creative companies, creative individuals uh, will come to us as staff saying, I've got this opportunity, can you find students to come and work with us on it? Uh, but also we will support you in going out there and researching and finding your own work experience placements. The reason we call it placements and not internships is because we don't have it planned into the timetable as such, because that's not how the creative industries work. They do not have a three month block. Uh, in the spring when they think, oh, I need lots of people to come in to do a project. Creative industry is fast moving. Uh, projects arise throughout the year, so you can't plan in when people might want to bring in students on work experience to support it. So we work with the sector. Uh, 
we will, as I say, support you to try and find your own. Um, students regularly go out to places like film and TV production companies, museums, galleries, uh, the Royal Opera House, uh, or into making companies who are producing product uh, and get work experience. Even under lockdown now, uh, currently in discussion with uh, co a company that produces graphic objects, uh, whether it's homewares or things like that, and we're looking to put students in to work with them as they are coming out of, uh, of lockdown. Thank you. Uh, so another one about the productions, Johnny. Mm -hmm. So they're asking, can they still get involved with acting productions if they are doing fine art, for example, or textiles? Uh, you, well, you could get involved possibly in terms of like helping out, um, but it's act, actor training is, is a very specific disciplined thing. So um, what you may do, if you want to come and you're studying photography or fine art, um, you could join or set up a sort of drama society. Uh, I know that some students had set up a sort of musical theatre society. Um, so that's certainly something you could do. Um, and, you know, you could come along and watch our performances and, you know, maybe get involved backstage and stuff. But uh, the acting performances are sort of like we create an ensemble and it's sort of to a certain style. Um, so it'd be quite tricky. And it's part of their assessed work. So, <coughs> yeah, yeah. You know, there, there, are, there are limits to how people can get involved in that. Yeah, but Johnny's right. Uh, we, the SU is really active and is always open to people's ideas. Uh, we've got, uh, a, for example, we've got a LARP uh, yeah. society. Yeah. So you know, you've got an idea, go for it. This theatre can be used uh, and there are plenty of small performance spaces as well around the town where you can do things like that. Okay. Would being quite a nervous or anxious person uh, in the interview situation affect their chances of getting a place on the course? I think the answer to that is no. Uh, we all appreciate that on occasions like interviews in particular, people get nervous. You know, you've not been in that situation very much uh, before, so we'll always uh, bear that in mind when we're talking to you. But I think for our interviews, you'll find that we are humans, uh, that we are more interested in your work and you will probably find yourself getting over your nerves by talking us through your work, whether that's a digital portfolio, a real portfolio, or physical examples of work that you're showing us. And one of the other pieces of advice I always give to students who are moving on to the next level of their career is use your work as your prop. If you're nervous, talk to your work. And that's always a good thing to do because the work is your passion and your your nerves will fade when you're getting passionate about something. Thank you, Pat. Uh, so this next question relates to career opportunities, particularly in the TV and film industry. Um, so are there any opportunities available in the industry for people doing an art and design degree course? In the film and TV industry? Yeah. Wow. Uh, the film and TV industry, uh, as a subsector of the creative industries, has been growing faster than the rest of the creative industries. And indeed, the creative industries are the only industrial sector in the UK that has grown and grown and grown and grown consistently for more than 20 years. It grew through the last recession and it will bounce back after COVID very strongly. Uh, so, yes, there are opportunities, particularly opportunities for people who are skilled in the technical crafts around the film and TV industry, whether or not that's people who can use the cameras, people who can set up lighting, people who can script write, show run, uh, do continuity, all of those roles are in great demand. And in the northeast of England, uh, we're a real centre for film and TV production in terms of location shooting uh, in particular. Uh, so the list of shows that have been filmed here and films for, filmed here recently is endless. 1917 was partly filmed on location here. Uh, we've had a Star Wars filmed on location here. Gentleman Jack uh, scenes were filmed here. So you will get opportunities and as a student here we can facilitate work experience opportunities on this vast range that's happening here. Thank you. This next question relates to coursework or dissertation. So 
how much written work is on the degree programme and is a dissertation expected at the very end? Yes, so there is an amount of written work. We usually um, have one, we have contextual studies that runs through the first two years and then into the dissertation. Um, so there is there is a level of written work. Um, however, it, like Johnny said, in comparison to how much work you are just generally making or in Johnny's case, acting or, or something like that, it's, it's very, very much 95, 99% of the time you're actually you know, doing coursework, you're being practical, you're in the studios working and doing things I assume that you probably prefer doing. Um, with the with the essay writing, um, we are that the, the subjects that you're writing about will directly relate to your work. And um, so even the writing element of it will be something that you feel passion, passionate about. You'll be writing about design or about the subject that you're studying. So uh, and you get an awful lot of support with that. We don't throw essays at you and ask you to complete them in two weeks. You'll have months and months of time to chip away at it. Um, and you know, my students in particular, I think across the board, all the students will send us drafts of essays. You'll get a lot of support um, with writing the with, with, with the writing element of, of the course um, because we know it isn't everybody's favourite thing to do. However, you know, it is a really important part, and I think the research and learning that that, you, that comes out of writing the essays is, is, is really um, warrant and really um, really important to your studies. And that, that, that kind of mix into an honours degree. Um, but I wouldn't worry about the split. I wouldn't worry about too much writing. We, we, we understand that there are different levels that would be coming to us um, that have different levels of soft English um, and that is fully supported. Yeah, we've got dedicated academic support for people. I think I mentioned it earlier in my, my introductory chat, but you'll, you can get dedicated support, which is independent of your programme so if you're shy about talking to it, uh, to your lecturers about it, you can talk to other academic staff that we have on site. Uh, but I'd say another thing, developing this skill, as Olivia's rightly pointed out, is important. You know, to learn to present an argument in writing is a skill that you'll need when you're out there as a creative professional as well. If you're pitching for business, it's not all about the face to face pitch you will have to learn a little bit of writing. So we'll support you through it, but it's it's an essential part. Chris, um, if somebody's auditioning for acting, Johnny, uh, what is the amount of monologues that they should rehearse and perform? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. So you do um, two monologues, one classical, um, one um, contemporary, both from plays, um, and we send out a, a about four or five page um, health guide um, about uh, how you select them and exactly what the audition's about. But what I'd say is um, when you're going to any audition, you're also auditioning in the institution. Um, so one thing that a lot of our students who, who come here is because they've came and they, they enjoyed the audition day. So um, it's not like a cattle market, like what some places are like. So you'll come and you do a full, you get a tour of our facilities. I talk you through the course, you do um, a workshop with me. Um, and then you do your speeches and we do a quick interview as well. So it's a full day and the monologues are part of it, um, but they're not the be all and end all as well. It, it's about your passion, uh, taking part in the workshop, how you work with others as well. Uh, but you get a full, uh, very clear sheet sent out to you as soon as you apply. So we've got somebody here that's thinking about applying for the graphic design degree and they're looking to break out into the music industry. So have we had any students in the past or currently that are kind of taking their graphic design work and going into the music industry in some way? Yes, definitely. I think it's often a very popular um, area that our students, um, the students focus on. Um, we do, we just had a live brief actually with Google um, and the live competition brief was to create um, LP um, album artwork um, using specific Google typefaces, which was part of the DNAD um, live briefs that we do every year. Um, and that you know, had um, lots of my students sort of creating um, album artwork. Um, and that sort of progresses also into um, creating not just album artwork, but actually um, you know, much bigger um, areas as well in terms of exhibition design. Um, and, and, and other areas like that. So the, the music industry is absolutely, um, uh, you know, a real focus of the graphic design course. And, and a lot of our students naturally are very um, inspired by that area. 
Um, and like I said, a lot of our projects are very open. So what we want from you is to kind of, you know, whatever passion you have, if that's music, if that's skateboarding, if that's, um, you know, whatever your passion is, that you bring that into your subjects. That's so important for your, your individual portfolio. And I think with all of the courses, um, but I can speak very, very much about graphics, that by the time you leave, you'll have a portfolio that, that is in that area you really want to go into because you'll have the opportunity to constantly pick and choose what you're working on so that when you leave, and um, in your case, if you're really interested in music, that the majority of your portfolio will speak to that particular industry as opposed to having a very generic graphic design portfolio like most graphic design graduates. We're very much about creating individual specialist portfolios that help you get into the area that you really want to work in. It's worth saying that we had uh, a group of illustrators and I think some graphic artists as well uh, just a couple of years ago who established their own collective which was around both production of zines, productions of art and merch but also has spun out into small scale venue management, uh, music and a music label as well. Okay, so someone here is thinking of production design and they're asking how many students do we take on our courses um, and is it important to have work experience as part of the course? Oh, you're looking at me, Lou. Um, <laughs> we have quite small group sizes for the particular programmes because of the intensity of the work that you'll be involved in um, and the intensity of contact and the fact that it's the way of managing, good way of managing access to all of our facilities. So yeah, relatively small group sizes, somewhere around about 20, a little bit more, a little bit less, depending uh, on the year. Um, work experience, yeah, getting work experience during your time with us is important. Um, it helps you stand out from the crowd when you graduate, but as I say, we'll support it. And in particular, uh, production design embed um, really great industry practice in their teaching. Uh, you know, we're, we're associated with things like Albert, the ethical and uh, environmental standards for production design. Uh, but we know so many production designers that we build sets very often, which are then used in real life TV shows. Um, so again, you get work experience outside of the, of the course, um, which will support you on because of our contacts, but you'll get it on the course itself because of live projects responding to people who want our work because we're one of the very few places that does and teaches large scale uh, set building. Before pursuing a degree program, is it beneficial to do a foundation course first? Um, with the foundation courses, lots of students do decide to go on to a foundation course before they come to us, um, but it's certainly not um, imperative. Um, I think that my advice is always if you are really unsure which area of design or art and design to go into, it might be that the foundation year would help to make your mind up between whether you want to do photography, fine art, graphics, acting. If that's the way that you, you know, are sort of feeling, you're just not quite sure which area to go into. However, um, it really isn't, um, isn't necessary and we have lots of students that um, think they have to do a foundation course, you absolutely don't, you can come here and that is, is, and that is um, you don't have to do that extra year in foundation. Um, if you have your mind made up and you, are, um, you have an idea of which kind of area you want to go into in terms of your profession when you leave us, then that is, you know, that's probably the point where you just you come and start your, your BA qualification as opposed to doing a foundation. And um, it certainly doesn't hurt to do the foundation course if you feel um, like you need to. We have a foundation course at our FE college in Middlesbrough, and we have a lot of students that will go into that course and then be able to really fully understand what the courses entail. Another, quite, another way of doing that though, if you are stuck between a couple of different options, for example, I'm looking at the questions on the board and a few people have asked questions about, you know, the, the tie between fine art and illustration. How do they make that decision? Well, you can come to us and apply for both courses and um, or even just let us know when we get in touch with you that you are interested in more than one subject and you will have an interview in both. 
And we're really good at kind of during the interview process, if you think you're better suited to a different course, we'll talk to you about that too. So I've had, you know, often um, times when we've interviewed students and really felt that they would be better placed in illustration or better placed in, for example, film and TV. And we've been able to have that kind of open conversation during the interview process to then make sure that you get in front of a different, um, you know, another program leader to be able to help um, and guide you with that. Um, and really, it's we want we want what fits really well with you. So, um, so it, you know that that's kind of the process that we go to, and it, and it often happens. But with the foundation course, completely optional. It certainly isn't um, imperative. Thank you. So this next question is about our film, TV, and theatre production course. So there's two questions really. Can they cover script writing on that course? And can you give a bit more information about the theatre aspect of the film course? Yeah, so um, it's film TV. It's a, it's a similar structure the other way for their course. So they're sort of about a third on theatre, two thirds um, on sort of more camera stuff. Um, and within that course, um, the first year is about giving you a real wide range of skills within film and theatre. Um, so you'll do everything from camera work to uh, understanding the basics of sound and lighting. Um, and that sound and lighting work is both theatre and film, um, which the aim of that is that when you graduate, it, it widens the possibilities out for you. Uh, and also what we find is that students come and they don't really um, become maybe wanting to be a director, let's say, but they don't really know all the possibilities that are within the industry for a sound designer or a lighting designer. Um, within the first semester, you do script writing on the film to be a theatre course. And those scripts in your first year um, go towards um, being either a short film or a short play which gets um, directed, lit, sound designed um, by you and your peers on the film to be a theatre course. Um, the sets get made by our production design course. Um, any visual effects or model making can be done by a visual effects and model making course. And then my guys come in uh, the last minute and perform <laughs> and get all the applause and all the thanks. Um, which is how we like it. Um, so yeah, um, whatever part of the film TV and theatre industry you're wanting to be part of, um, we, we cover it and we give you, uh, we expose you to all the different aspects. Pat, you did touch on this earlier, so it could be from somebody that's just come into the Q&A session. Um, can you give more information on how students will be kept safe due to COVID-19? Okay, uh, so this September when we all come back, there will be obviously some changes. There will be social distancing uh, around our reception areas. There will be social distancing uh, and measures to support that around our library and our IT suites. Perhaps most critically, we'll be introducing uh, booking systems and timetabled slots for access to studios and workshops to make sure you get the full amount of contact time and also to make sure that you are getting that hands on experience, which is why you come to an art school in the first place. When social distancing ends, it will be more open uh, and we'll move away from the booking system. The other way that we're supporting safety is lectures and large group activities will be delivered digitally whilst we're still socially distancing and that's beneficial in two ways, actually. One, it means that on depending on timetable, you can schedule your day. So if you are traveling into new studios, you can stay home, do lecture, come in. Equally, you can use our IT suites by booking them to take part in the online live lectures from the IT suite. Um, and they're going to be recorded so you can access them at any point. So it's an, a, a permanent record of that lecture to support your learning. Thank you. So our application cycle is still open um, all the way through up until September. Do we still have rooms and accommodation and can people still apply for finance if they want to apply for this year? Uh, if you're thinking about starting in September, uh, then my recommendation to you is get on to Student Finance England and start making your application as soon as you can to make sure that there isn't a delay in you receiving money at the start of the year. 
but yes, you can still make your application to Student Finance England actually all the way through to September, but it's best to get it started now. And you don't need to know which degree course you're going to be studying on to start making your application and getting that sorted out. I think that's important to realise. You can just make the application. Uh, in terms of our accommodation, uh, yes, we've still got uh, some accommodation places available for September. So do get in touch with us. But again, get in touch with us soon because that position will change. Thanks, Pat. The next question, uh, Johnny, if someone's looking to apply for acting, would you expect them to have done drama or performing arts at A level? No, um, I talk, it, it's good if they have, um, but I totally appreciate that um, uh, for various reasons, uh, you, uh, schools and sixth forms are cutting down on the drama provision. Um, and we have some students who've done A-level drama or done BTECs in performing arts um, and have done loads of youth theatre. Sometimes we've got students who did English, English literature and loved Shakespeare, so that's why they want to get into doing it. Um, I did have one student who, who'd never done any acting, um, which she'd always wanted to do it, but they'd never offered it um, in her school. Um, and she came, she did the audition, then she came and spent the day with us. Um, and she's now doing absolutely great um, and had like really has had really, really good parts within the course and is, is getting really good grades. So um, I don't expect you to come here having, um, you know, a massive CV. Um, that's for once you graduate, you know, we, it, it's really important that it's not your fault if your school didn't offer drama um, and stuff. So no, just get in touch with us. Um, we'll try to teach you as much as we can in that first year. Great. Uh, we've got somebody asking here about opportunities to work with Sony Music. Um, so I suppose um, the question there is, uh, have we done any work with companies such as Sony? Um, or what other kind of live brief opportunities are available to students? And maybe you could provide some examples of what you're doing, what you've done in your course. Okay. Uh, yes, um, so we every every year we take part in um, the DNA debriefs, which is which are live um, projects um, and they are live competition briefs um, and it'll get your work in front of um, the right sort of people, these big sorts of companies. And um, this year, for example, um, we have uh, com just completed some um, live competition briefs with Nike um, with Google, like I said, um, uh, with Team Vogue um, and with Adidas. Um, and you know, last year we worked with Strava. You know, we, every year we're sort of working with different with different companies with these live competition briefs. On top of the live competition briefs, we've also worked with Radio One last year when we had Big Weekend in Middlesbrough. Um, we also have worked with, um, like I said, Strava, to creating app design for them and creating advertisements. And um, so, and, and every course will have a list. Um, you know, too long to sort of mention about the different companies that they have worked with in their course. So, um, so yes, we are constantly inundated with opportunities to work with companies um, and to work on live briefs and live competitions. Um, and, you know, we're really fortunate because of that. Um, and our students really sort of reap the benefits of that, really. Um, and also, like Pat said, you know, there's lots of opportunities to go off and do placements as well. So some of these that our students have worked on have been very much self-initiated as well, where students have had the confidence and the, the sort of a mentorship to be able to go out and start to um, ask to work with, um, you know, big companies. So, you know, if, if you're particularly for your particular question, if you are really interested in working for Sony, and um, then it could be that you start to develop a portfolio that would, would get you in front of them and then start to make those connections. And in the in the meantime, you know, you can obviously be working on a whole, a whole stuff, live competition briefs and live uh, live projects and placements that will also be, you know, as, as credible as well. And um, so, you know, it's very much a, um, a, a thing whereby, you know, we will offer an awful lot. But it's also about the kinds of opportunities that you create for yourself, um, which is really good kind of learning for when you are actually working in industry. That's, you know, that's what it's all about, really. And it's also worth saying that you know, we've worked with BBC, we've worked with ITV, we've worked with Channel 4, we've worked with other major production houses. But sometimes if you think that you want to work with a big named company, a big corporation, actually a lot of the work that is done on the creative side for some of these corporations is done by smaller scale outfits that you will never have heard of, 
who are doing it for that corporation and we've got the links with those types of organizations so you know we work with design houses and designers who are actually producing stuff for major film and tv companies for major games companies but they're behind the scenes you know they're the illustrators they're the matte painters and you don't know the name of that company but you know the name that goes up on the screen in front of you yeah, I think on to add to that, I think it's we we give you the opportunity to work with big names like you say like on our acting course we'll have we've had people who've worked with the RSC and people from the National Theatre. But it, when you first graduate, it may be that you go into the more fringe sector. Um so we also make sure that you're aware of sort of um the whole ecosystem of the industries. Um because there's you know, somewhat could be like Sony is there on the top. Yeah. But there's so many smaller like music companies below it that actually might be your first professional gig. Um, and it's the same in acting and in, in all the sectors. So we, we give you a real range of practitioners and artists to come in and work with you so you understand how the ecology of the system works as well. And it's getting to know creatives as well. Yeah. The fact that we're part of the creative ecosystem we've got on all of the different programmes and all of the staff here have got great links with creative professionals out there who are doing these things. Olivia talked about the Radio One Big Weekend. Well, our students there alongside uh, Jimmy Terrell uh, were commissioned to produce artwork for that. Uh, Jimmy is a freelance creative videographer and designer, but he does all of the videography and artwork for Beck. He's worked with Prodigy, he's worked with Farrell. Farrell. Uh, you know, he doesn't work for a big company but they employ him to do it. Thanks, Pat. So we've got somebody here that's been a little bit nervous about the script writing element of the film course. Mm -hmm. They have a preference towards a more documentary style um, kind of filming yeah. and never tried script writing. Yeah. So what would you kind of say to them? To that sort that, of that's cool. Reassurance? Yeah, I mean, that's cool. I mean, the thing is, is, is in the first year, um, you know, it depends how you've been taught script writing previously and stuff. So you'll get taught script writing. It's not just you come in on the first day, you've got to start writing a script. You know, we, we go through a, a process where you are starting to develop your technique and then you get formative and developmental feedback as you go through making it. Um, but the aim of, of that first year on the film course is that you do a bit of everything um, and then you find what route you want to go down. So there's some students who are on our second year who made a fantastic film um, documentary film about female boxing um, within the northeast, and that's what they were doing is their major project. Whereas there was another student within their year group who, who um, straight away in the first year loved script writing, wrote this excellent film that was um, nominated for the RTS awards. So um, whatever route you're wanting to go down, we've got a real um, our staff's got a real broad experience, so we can help to mentor you and nudge you in the right direction of which way you want to go. Um, I think a big thing on all the courses is that we support you to become the practitioner and the artist that you want to be. We don't say you have to be this or you have to be that. We just want to help you develop your own practice. I think it's the most important thing. Exactly. Thank you. Um, the next question, and we've probably got a couple of questions left now, uh, is to do with induction and what are our plans um, surrounding induction for the new starters this year? Uh, I think I covered some of this off when I did my initial um, chat, but you might not have been online then. Uh, so for all students who are starting with us this September, uh, we are going to have a two week induction period where it's just our first years and those students who are joining us as direct entries into second or third year. <coughs> and during that two weeks, you'll get introduced to safe working in our workshops and studios, in the normal way, uh, you know, the health and safety around the use of the kit, but you'll be introduced into the COVID secure ways of doing that, that we're going to be using this September. You will also be supported and given any kind of um, support that we can around the access to digital learning whilst we are using that as a key aspect of our delivery. So. We'll talk to you about what your IT capability is, uh, what IT kit you've got, whether or not you're connected at home, and we will work with you to A, familiarise you with the platform that we use, and B, support you in making sure you can access it and get online. 
whether or not that's with your own kit, with kit that we help you get, or uh, using our IT suite kit. Great. Um, let's make this the last question now. Um, so it's talking about the, the currency of skills and knowledge um, acquired on our degree programmes and whether that after somebody kind of graduates, if they want to go into an industry that's not totally aligned or specific to that degree route, do, does our, do our degrees carry that kind of currency in being able to, you know, go into different areas? I'll start this off, but Colin's probably want to answer it as well. The key thing about a creative degree program is that you are developing a whole set of skill sets which are flexible, which enable you to learn and be flexible in the way that you respond. Creativity is all about flexibility. It's all about developing concepts, reacting to feedback, using feedback to develop and change the way you do things. So you're going to learn those types of skill sets which are totally portable between different parts of the industry. So I really don't worry, wouldn't worry about that. One thing to say is that we will support all of our graduates and do support all of our graduates after they've left us. We regularly uh, see them, coach them, offer them mentoring. And so I wouldn't worry about that. But who does? You got any thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, there is lots of transferable skills within whatever we're teaching you. Um, and I think everybody, everybody that every lecturer on the programme um, have worked in industry and realise how how the skills that they probably learn at university have been transferable into lots of different areas. I mean, myself, I have did a graphic design degree and have worked in interiors. I've worked in branding, I've worked in advertising. So I have a really kind of wide portfolio um, of different areas. But all of that learning will happen here. We're very much about gearing you up for having the sorts of skills that will help you in the creative market. Um, and it's amazing how um, how uh, many skills that you learn here because we're so collaborative. So, you know, we have students in, for example, in graphics who are also using the dark rooms and developing a photography skill and developing other kind of area skills. So, you know, when you come here, it's about what you sort of want and what you put into it and and taking opportunities and you know you'll be amazed at how many skills that you pick up um, along the way within within the programs and um, and the skills that you will learn on every program and um, you know help you become a better professional and you know help you with your professional development into whatever kind of career that you're going to go into and um, those three years you know are packed full of um of of, of ways of working and being a um, a working professional yeah, just to echo that, but I think the other the other thing that creatives are having a creative mind is vital. But creatives invariably work together, um, and it's such an important skill that um, you will develop on this course by just working with so many different people from different backgrounds, different skill sets, and being able to understand and empathise with people and, and work with people and get along with people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's so important in whatever sector you go into. Um, and I've had students do my acting courses and go into teaching. I've had students go into publishing. Um, I've had students go into advertising um, and sales. So there's not just one route necessarily for you when you graduate. Um, and but these skills are really, really important. Um, whatever industry you go into. Yeah, you you learn to learn. Mm -hmm. So if your question is also about you know well there's skills in a different technical discipline or something that I haven't learned on my degree and I think I need uh, if I'm going to shift sector slightly, then you've got those learning skills, you're equipped with that. And as Johnny says, you also have contacts in all probability who can help you to actually develop those additional skill areas. Uh, but it's also about pivoting. Our, our graduates regularly pivot their careers. Um, you know, whether or not that's moving from being an interiors designer to being uh, a graphic designer or uh, a portrait artist, or whether it's just pivoting in terms of moving from actually being uh, a fashion journalist to doing the graphic design for someone like Sipsmiths, which is the career pathway that one of our recent graduates followed. These things happen. Uh, we give you the skills and the, and the I think actually the attitudes and behaviours that can enable you to do that. Being creative is also about being resilient. 
That's fantastic. So Johnny, Olivia, Pat, thank you so much for being part of the panel and representing the school and answering the questions. And also thank you to our audience as well who submitted some amazing questions there. It was really, really useful and valuable. Um, if there is any questions that you think of after this event, please do get in touch with us. There's a number of ways you can do that. Um, you can contact us via email, studentrecruitment at northernarts.ac.uk. You can also call us um, on 01642 or you can also chat to us on our live chat facility um, on our website as well. Um, but we hope you've really enjoyed uh, the virtual open day and um, we really do look forward to, to meeting you at some point in the future. Yeah. Thanks very much.